Presenting history's best on PBS. Tonight on People's Century, 1945, the bloodiest war of the century draws to a close. But the Allies' celebrations mask deep divisions. An iron curtain descends on the world stage, igniting a cold war in the brave new world. Just one in a series of extraordinary films that explores our century. People's Century. Tonight. Brought to you by Conseco, where we believe that leaping at certain financial opportunities can make a secure financial future harder to grasp. Conseco. Our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Major funding for People's Century was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Additional funding was provided by the Lowell Institute. This is Frank Gillard at General Bradley's headquarters. East and West have met. At 20 minutes to 5 on Wednesday afternoon, April the 25th, 1945, American troops made contact with Soviet elements of Marshal Konyev's 1st Ukrainian Army Group near the German town of Torgau on the Elbe. This is the news for which the whole Allied world has been waiting. The forces of liberation have joined hands. The bloodiest war of the 20th century is almost over. Although they were allies, the troops come from two different worlds, the communist East and the capitalist West. We were like brothers. We had defeated the enemy together. We were united in fighting fascism, and we'd won. Alexander Silvashko and William Robertson are two of the first soldiers to meet. The Americans gave us cigarettes, food. They gave us whatever they had, even watches as souvenirs. The atmosphere was unbelievable. You must understand, we weren't able to really communicate with them except in sign language. and So you do the sort of things that people did. They were good people. And we had no problem getting along with the, uh, with the individual Russian soldiers that uh, we met there at all. There was a, the relief that the war was uh, coming now to a close and that uh, the Allies had won the war. We were just plain thankful that we were there and breathing. The picture of Robertson and Silvashko together is seen around the world. Their meeting on the Elbe is a symbol for the post-war hopes of millions. It is a time for celebration. Victory had been won in a people's war, a war to protect a cherished way of life from fascist tyranny. This is a glorious hour. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. 
война победоносно завершена. Германия полностью разгромлена. As people emerged from the ruins of bombed out cities, no one knew how relations between East and West would affect them. What was to become of us? A beautiful city was flattened. For Berliners like 22-year-old Ilse Kruger, the immediate need was to rebuild their lives. We took picks and hammers, anything we could get hold of. We cleaned up the bricks, and then we formed a great long line, passing them from hand to hand. They struggled to find food and shelter. But they also knew that the victorious allies represented two fundamentally different systems and their future depended on which they would have to live under. It was the Russians we were afraid of. We were dismayed when we realized the occupying powers would make all the decisions. We had to do what they told us. The occupying powers met near Berlin to decide Germany's future. To ease Soviet fears that Germany might rise again, frontiers were redrawn and millions of people were uprooted. Though the two sides were deeply suspicious of each other, the differences were glossed over. This is the BBC Home Service. The Allies leave this conference, which has strengthened the ties between the three governments, with renewed confidence that their governments and peoples will ensure the creation of a just and enduring peace. Free elections were promised, but in the countries where the Soviets had driven out the Germans, all key government posts were given to communists, whatever the feelings of the local population. In the euphoria of victory, Russian soldiers like Captain Anatoly Semiryaga had no doubt what the future held. We were taught that the defeat of fascism was an important step towards the victory of socialism all over the world. Since the Red Army had liberated Eastern Europe, sooner or later socialism would be established there. And despite the public displays of Allied unity, Russians stationed in Berlin were reminded the struggle was not over. We were called in by our officers and told, listen, the Germans were not solely responsible for this war. It wasn't just Hitler, but the whole imperialist system. Imperialism was responsible. And who are the representatives of imperialism now? The same allies with whom we fought together against Hitler. The recent allies had their minds on other things. It's like a new life. It's like walking from one scene of a tragedy into a, a musical. Gail Halverson had spent three years in the Air Force home, go back to see my girlfriend, uh, plan 